Ah, Lord, you can sit down. I want to say something. I want to tell you this. And I want you to understand this. I, I, I've seen prophecies. I've seen visions. Um, come, I want to fill you on this. I'm not going to harp on last week because it is what it is. Um, ten years ago, God spoke to me. He said, hey, you're going to be a bishop over these ministries. And you're going to see great things happen. And people laughed and mocked me. They said, you, you know, you, you take this title. Who do you think you are and all this kind of stuff? Well, you may, you may not see us as your bishop, but there's about 160 churches in Kenya that see us as their bishop. Not only that, we found favor with national TV. Oh, you said, well, is that local TV station Kowal West? No, nah, not really. I said 10 years ago that God would put us, would find us a place to stand where kings and presidents stood. In July, President Obama stood in the same place I stood and gave a speech to the nation. Somehow or another, we ended up, I, I, don't, even, I don't even remember how it happened, what happened. Next thing I know, they had me standing in front of a TV camera and they said, Go. And so I'm thinking I'm speaking to a few people. I get at the end and I said, Pastor Sean, how many, how many people is this going to go to? This morning in Nairobi, Kenya, in five other countries, 40 million people, 40 million people in the world. <laughs> 40 million people now know who Bishop Tim and Living Way World Church is. If that don't shake your foundations, nothing else will. <laughs> oh my lord oh my lord oh my lord mm. I'm so full um, wow you know when you see things can I, can I share one more thing with you there's an older bishop he's probably in his late 70's uh Bishops and over there, you understand. Bishops and pastor, bishops and reverends, do not allow other pe pastors to pray for them. Okay. Uh, until I showed up, till the living way. Let me just say, I living way, and the Holy Ghost showed up. Amen. They were all hesitant till the Holy Ghost hit them in the face, and they became different vessels for God. Well, this one bishop come to me. He said, "Listen, I want to talk to you." And he was crying, he was weeping, and he was an older guy. So, you know, I'm going to listen to him, he's elders. He sits in front of me, he said, brother, I want to tell you something. He said, I've been up all night crying. He said, um, Bishop, you, he said, you know, I know you're a bishop spiritually. I see it. I get it. He goes, mm. he shook his head. He said, y'all are much more than this, much more than this. He said, you have an apostolic seal upon your life for the nations. He said, I see you going to the United Nations and spitting in the devil's face. And drawing a line in the sand saying, no more. I said, I received that. Then he said, you have an apostolic seal where God is about to use you to change the earth. Where have I heard that before? You. You are us. We are you, right? Remember when I said, you don't realize how, much, you don't realize how big this really is. Or how important you really are. That a small group of people in Kowal West, in Covington, Georgia, are about to change the earth. Do you understand? It's coming. You better get ready for it. Amen? So let's get into it. That's been a great week. It's been good. I appreciate your prayers. We can feel your prayers all the way over there. Amen? And you can really appreciate your team. They did a great job. Uh, I probably aggravated the snot out of them, but uh, I drug them through airports and all that kind of stuff. And they're really, really tired. I know. We finally got a hamburger yesterday. Praise Jesus for that. Amen? But we did it. Um, the struggle is real. But you know what? I really felt guilty. You know, <laughs> I... <laughs> Uh, so, you know, yeah, they all, it was really good. So let's read this, Hebrews 10 and 23. Let's get right into it. I want to I hit this hard, and we'll get out of here. So cause I know people are tired, and I really appreciate you all coming out tonight. Wow, what a big group of people tonight. Um, you really made my heart smile, and, and uh, you, you know, you make a lot of the, the tiredness go away because of your, your, your faith. Hebrews 10, 23 says, let's hold, profession, hold fast to the profession of our faith without wavering. So we can't stop. We can't miss this momentum. We've got to keep going forward like we never have before. God is faithful to him that promised. I'm waiting on my interpreter. Where's Jeff? I don't, I'm, uh, I'm hesitating because I'm waiting on somebody else. To, I, it's in my ear. I'm like, oh, are you going to go? <laughs> somebody just stand here so I feel comfortable. I'm just teasing. 
But the thing is, what you see this here, we got to be more aggressive with our faith. We got to be more aggressive. When we're more aggressive with our faith, we see the manifestation of God greater. When we're more aggressive with our faith, and we start speaking, she spoke, I want to see that orphanage. Boop! It comes. When you're aggressive with it, God speaks to other people on your behalf and makes it happen. You understand what I'm saying? When you're aggressive in your faith and you're aggressive in your word and you're aggressive in your prayer, then you start moving mountains. You see what I'm saying? But you've got to be aggressive. And it, instead of being passive and wondering why things are not taking place, you've got to believe God has done it and God's going to do it and God's going to show up every single time. You see what I'm saying? We're so afraid of offending somebody, you know what I mean, that we won't tell the truth. You need to start telling the truth. And not worrying about if you offend somebody. Well, you know, we can't can be con concerned now about, well, well, so-and-so don't like what I'm going to say. Man, preach the gospel, amen. Heal the sick, cast out devils, amen, and raise the dead. And don't worry about nothing else. Amen? Prophesy, go to the nations, go to the other people, amen. Build orphanages and build ministries and go to national TV. Go do all these things, amen, and don't care what nobody else says. You know, who cares? People don't like us. <laughs> people, who cares? Oh, they're going to fall on their face now. Oh, really? Oh, really? You know, Elijah was, you know what's wrong? You know what's wrong with churches today and people today and Christians today? They're afraid. Elijah wasn't afraid. You know, he wouldn't, he wouldn't even be accepted in most churches today. He was rugged, nasty, ugly, old, amen. And, and, but you know what? He said things like, hey, let's put God to the test. Let's see who God really is. You know what I mean? You know, when was the last time you did that? You know, we say, oh, we believe in God. When was the last time you put God to the test? We, we seen it last week. When, you, when was the last time you put God to the test and to see if he would really do what he said he would do? God did it. I was like, wow, you, know, you just start seeing things go. Pastor Stacy went, right? And, and, and a lot of people said, well, she ain't going to like that kind of place. You know what I mean? And at first, she looked at him, and she's like, hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a shower? Where's the curtain? Okay. Come two days in, she said, I won't complain again. This is a mansion. Amen. When you put your God to the test and you pursue him, he will manifest in you and show you things you never thought you'd say. Now she say, I don't I don't feel led to go to Kenya. I don't feel led to go on a worldwide mission. It's just not me. Ask her now. Ask her now. She about took all the kids home with her. Hallelujah. I don't know. <laughs> we just got to buy some more plane tickets. I know one little girl, her name was Stacy. We about had to bring home with us, right? So put God to the test. Listen to who God really is. The Bible says in 1 Kings 18, 24, it says, And call on the name of your gods, and I will call on the name of my God, the Lord. And the God that answereth by fire, let him be God. You call on the worldly things. You believe in the worldly system. You believe in all the church system. I'll call on my God and listen to who's really God, right? Let's, let's see who really puts it to that. Let's see who can really manifest money. Let's see who can really build orphanages. Let's see who can really do great things. If I'd called and asked the TV station to come, there's no way I could have came. But through the power of God, through the Holy Spirit of God, that we were able to have an input in there. And through, through our prayer and through our, our Holy, the Holy Spirit that lives inside of us is the way we're going to move nations, the way we're going to heal the sick, the way the power of the Holy Ghost is going to explode. But it's up to all of us to accept the challenge, right? We've got to believe God. We've got to be ready to go for God. We've got we to gotta lay aside all these things that are easily besetting us. All the, the struggles... Yeah, the struggle is real, but you ain't got no struggle. Amen. Oh, you're a bishop, you just don't know what I'm going through. No, you ain't got nothing. I'm going to tell you right now. What you got is you and you got a, you're blessed. You're blessed beyond measure. You're blessed coming. You're blessed going, amen. And when you start realizing those blessings, amen, God will manifest in your life because you begin to be, become a, a blessing in somebody else's life. Does that make sense? And God will elevate you. But it's up to you today, amen. You want to say, he said, if he answers by fire, he is God. So all the people answered and said, it is well spoken. Do you believe that today? Was it well spoken? We're the ones, you know what it is? I believe people today are ready, don't you? Because y'all are all here tonight. I believe you're ready. Are you ready? I believe you're ready. I believe living way is ready, amen? Are you ready to be prayer warriors? Are you ready to be devil caster outers? Amen. You know, I've seen a devil cast out of a van this week. He became stiff as a board. He, he, he was so stiff. He, he was sitting there all of a sudden, and, and he didn't know what to hit him, right? He got stiff. I was trying to put a, one of them handkerchiefs in his hand. I gave away about 500 of those things, amen. 
that came Johnny on the spot every time I needed one, right? But I put one in his hand. He couldn't even hold it. He was so stiff. Man, the power got hit. He got delivered. We were driving away from the crusade grounds. He was chasing me. He was running down looking in the window. going, Bishop, Bishop, Bishop. I said, yeah, I know you got delivered. I know you feel good. And, and what happened was, I didn't know this, he couldn't talk. Charity said he had a stammering tongue, or, talk, or what do you call it, where they couldn't talk. He just, he, he, could, he would try, but by God, he was like, Bishop, 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 I'm delivered. Bishop, Bishop. He was saying, when, when was the last time when y'all chased me down the street? When was the last time y'all cried when I drove out of the parking lot? Or Pastor Stacy? Hey, y'all better step up, man. I'm going to have me a living way in Kenya. Hallelujah. I like that, man. People, man, you get a miracle, y'all ch- Y'all get a miracle, y'all go back out there and pick the devil up and go back home with him. Amen? Y'all should be chasing on Thank you, Bishop. Thank you for <laughs> giving me that word. Thank you, God. You know what I said? To God be the glory. And Charity said, Oh, he's happy. Well, yeah, yeah, praise the Lord. I mean, I was happy too, right? But I believe that, I believe people today are ready, but the church leaders aren't, right? You know, they play it safe. We're playing it safe. You got to quit playing it safe. Just got to throw it all out there. You know, hallelujah. You got to put it all out there. You know what I mean? I threw these people on stage. I threw, boom, Christina on stage. First thing, bam. <laughs> I was like, you know, well, I could I could have played it safe. Well, let me... You know what I mean? Just you know, y'all better just watch this year. Oh, y'all, y'all better grow up. I threw, I got through Sabrina on the stage out in the Crusade ground, and you know they couldn't get the CD. I said, just sing. <laughs> you know, I told, I said, you don't need no CD. Go for it. Amen. You know, I believe most shows, most churches are afraid to preach it because they're afraid it will manifest. You let a preacher get being chased down the end of the driveway because somebody just got healed. His congregation is going to start talking, right? Amen. So when you, when you start doing these kind of things, you step up with the apostolic seal of the nations, you start speaking to 40 million people, but the church is, amen. You know, uh, people, people like, you, then you got to manifest. It's got to grow. You can't, there's no turning back. There's no turning back this time. You understand? There's no going back because God said, hey, this is the time. This is the moment. This is your moment. This is your night. You can't wait till Sunday morning. You can't wait another night. This is your night to get born again. This is your night to get saved. This is your night to get delivered. Amen. This is your night to chase me down the driveway. Amen. This is your night to get desperate for him. Amen. This is your night to get your miracle. Amen. This is your night to accept what God has called you into. This is your night. Amen. To let God have his way in your life. Amen. And say, I will never, ever, ever be the same. I'm going to tell you, we left them people different than we got there. And this group, I was watching, I just looked around, and Sabrina don't look the same, Rachel don't look the same, Christina don't look the same, Pastor Stacey don't look the same. You know, I've been there, I'm crazy already, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But they ain't the same. They're not the same. They're not the same. You're not the same. But it's no different than you showing up here, you should leave here different than you got here. You know what I mean? You don't know, got to go around the world to get what we have, what God's doing. Amen. You see what I'm talking about? You can't be afraid. See, one of the reasons why you don't want to get delivered tonight, you want this to be your new day, and you don't want to get set free, is then you got to manifest that freedom in your life every day. And some of y'all are so afraid of the freedom and being afraid of being set free from the, the, the vices that have been holding you back that you're afraid of it, so it's easier to stay in what you got instead of getting desperate for him and letting him have his way. Amen. You chase me down the driveway, then you got you got to produce that the next day, and some of you just can't do it or don't want to do it, right? Church leaders, church prophets, church ministers, church prayer warriors, we got to set the tone. We cannot accept mediocrity anymore. We got to tell it the way it is. We got to preach it the way it is. We got we got to prophesy it the way it is. Amen. We got to talk about visions. We got to talk about manifestations. Amen. We got to talk about how to be delivered, how to be healed, right? And we got to shout hallelujah while we're doing it, right? We got to set the tone. You prayer warriors set the tone. You worship leaders set the tone. You preachers and you teachers set the tone. Amen. Mediocrity will not be accepted anymore. If you're in a leadership position here, amen, you better be filled with signs, wonders, and miracles, or you won't be a leader no more. Amen. We ain't got time. Or you're being mean. 
I'm not being mean. I'm not, listen, I got people around the world need help. There's people in this community need help, amen. And we are sitting there uh, lily living around. We need to be, listen, miracles ought to be taking place right here in this place. And God can use this property in this place as a foundation to change the earth. Amen. He's already shown me that he can take a few thousand and manifest it, not let it run out. What he could do with millions, right? So let the power of God manifest and be not afraid. So you got to let it go, and you just got to say, I've had enough, right? You've been bound by the things you've been going through your whole life. Now don't be afraid to let it go. And then just, you know, so many, you know, have you ever heard of this? You remember, I, I'll give you a good example. Y'all remember, how many of y'all used to watch Andy Griffith? Remember Otis? He, what would he do? He would put his own self in jail, right? Because he was comfortable there. Some of you that have been in prison, or, and I'm not being ugly, but anything, y'all know people that when they get out, they can't function. They're more comfortable being in prison than they are being set free, right? Amen. Well, there's a lot of you in here tonight that are more comfortable in your spiritual prison, amen, than being set free because you don't think you can handle freedom, amen, because you don't think you can go through it. But if you trust him and believe in him, amen, then you'll enjoy your freedom. I'm freer than I've ever been. I'm more on fire than I've ever been, amen. I'm not, a, I'm not going back to jail and locking myself in there. You understand? I love it. I'm going to be like that. I was like that man on the way home. I was like, praise the Lord. Praise. You know, I was like, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I was like, praise the Lord. Amen. I was like chasing the Holy Ghost down the road, thanking him for the manifestation that we've seen. Not only what he's doing there, but what he's doing here. Amen. And the power of God is seeing the hunger that you people have. That's what it's all about. But you can't doubt. If you doubt he can, then you doubt he will. You want me to say it again? If you doubt he can, you'll doubt he will. Yeah, but if you don't doubt he can, then you know he will. Okay? I don't doubt he can. I know he can. I don't doubt he will. I know he will. Is God going to show up? Yeah, absolutely sure will. Wherever, God, wherever the Holy Spirit is, God is. Right? That's why you have an impact. You know, you can't doubt his ability. You, you can't doubt that God will want to use you and put his ability inside of you to use you to change communities in the earth. Amen? You can't doubt it. You got, and here's what happens. I think a lot of times the church and believers feel that you're not everything that you should be. Well, you are everything. How many born again you got to hear? Feel the Holy Ghost. You don't believe you have the ability. You have supernatural ability and power inside of you that's built in. It's like central air, which they don't have over there, by the way. They got, you know, but every time we get on that stage, the wind will blow. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, I can just I can just see. I'm just kind of having a vision of standing on <laughs> Oh my God. Truly, truly, most of you, most people doubt God's power. But most of you shouldn't doubt God's power. Right? We feel, and I said this, you feel you're not everything that you should be. Was Elijah perfect? No. But he was proclaiming, are you perfect? I ain't perfect either. But guess what? He was proclaiming God's power. And when you proclaim God's power, God will back you up. Amen? I don't believe that. Well, yeah, he did. We stood up there and raised our hand and said, hey, who's sick? I grabbed the woman. They thought I was choking some lady. Pastor John's mom, uh, uh, was it, sister came up. She had this big growth in her neck, right? Amen? I don't, you know, I said, you believe? She said, I believe. I just grabbed that sucker by the, I just grabbed that growth. I seen it. I grabbed it. And I felt it smush in my, I didn't squeeze it. I didn't hurt the lady. I know they, they thought I was choking her. You know, I just aggressively grabbed the, the, the devil, right? Amen? And I said, devil, you can't be in there no more, right? Because I don't doubt God's ability every single time. Every time God says, hey, if I show up, if you show up, then the Holy Ghost better show up. Because it's the atmosphere around you revolves around the atmosphere inside of you. <sighs> oh, you're going to be different. You, you should be like that here. All right, I'm saying y'all are different here. Y'all are different than they are. That's what it is. That, I'm hungry. Because y'all know where your meal's coming from. Y'all go in the Waffle House like me after church, right? They don't know where they're going to eat. They don't throw away by, they don't throw, they don't throw away food. Y'all you know, look at my refrigerator. We got some leftovers left. From when I left, <laughs> they, don't, they don't have leftovers. You know, the food we didn't eat, the people that cooked the food ate what we left. All right? You see what I'm talking about? We got to get desperate for him. We got to trust him and believe in him and love him. We got to let the Holy Ghost manifest in us that we may see the glory of God wherever we go. 
So wherever we go, miracles show up. Wherever we go, salvation shows up. Wherever we go, there's a harvest, right? God will back you up when you proclaim his power, right? Why? Because when you speak his word, all of heaven backs you up, right? How, how long ago did you see yourself there? How long ago did you see yourself in that place? How long ago did you see yourself prophesying, ministering into those people? How long ago was it? God, you, you, you couldn't see yourself there two years ago, but God seen it, God manifested it, and he grew in it, and he exploded. All of heaven, when you showed up, what happened? All of heaven showed up with you, didn't it? Did the, did the prayer that you do here work there? Did it work? Did the message you talk here, does it, did it work there? Why? Because, but just because, it, because the air atmosphere there is better than ours? No, because the atmosphere inside of you showed up and shifted the atmosphere there. I showed up on stage, amen. The atmosphere in me shifted the atmosphere out in the streets. So wherever you go, atmosphere should shift. Wherever I go, ha, shift it because I carry it with me, right? Go to the airport, boom, there it is. You know, boom, there it is, right? You got it. You show up at the orphanage. What? Boom, what happens? You just bless him for six months. Oh, you think you're something. No. The atmosphere inside of me changes the atmosphere around me. What atmosphere do you carry? You know what? Did you know you ain't got to be perfect for God to use you? Hmm? Most of you will let the devil talk you out of your miracle tonight. Most of you let the devil talk you out of your destiny. Most of you let the devil talk you out because, oh, somebody don't like you or you get offended or something like that. Don't you dare let the devil talk you out of it, amen? You, say, you tell the devil to take a back seat. You don't have to take a back seat anymore, amen? You should celebrate Jesus' name and believe that God has manifested in your life and don't allow the devil to, to, to get a stronghold in your life, amen? And it's not because you don't believe in his power, but it's because you doubt his willingness to put that ability inside of you. Does that make sense? Some of y'all doubt, okay, Bishop, you know, I really want to get out of this situation, man, but I'm not really sure he can do it. I know God can do it. I know God will do it, and all of heaven will back you up if you'll just take the first step. The problem is you don't want to do it. And it's not because you don't believe in his power. It's because you, don't, you doubt he'll do it. Here's what happens. Most of you figure you don't deserve it, right? How many know we do? That through the cross, we all deserve it. And you can't figure out why he would give it to us. Remember when Peter walked on water? How many of y'all believe that Jesus can do all things? Can he heal the sick? Can he cast out devils? Didn't he do that? Can he walk on water? We all believe that, right? So Peter didn't doubt Jesus when, when, when he jumped out of the boat, put his legs on the other side of the boat. And he didn't doubt that Jesus could walk on water. But when he began to walk on water, he began to sink. He yelled for God's help. Peter didn't doubt Jesus, but when the rose, when the wind rose up, got in a bad area, and the waves got rough, he started thinking, how in the world do I get out of here? Go plop yourself on a stage with a bunch of people smoking marijuana and prostitutes on the side of the stage. Doug got high, I think, on the side of the stage. I was like, oh, somebody watch Doug, make sure he don't fall off the stage over there. Praise the Lord. You know, why, how could God use me in this place? Because God will use you in that place. And you don't understand why you're here, but God will do supernatural ability wherever you're at as long as you've got an atmosphere inside of you, right? And the want to and the, and the need to to see your life changed. Do you believe that today? You can walk on water. He started thinking, why am I out here? Maybe some of you thought that last week when you first got there. You got there, you're bone tired. Been traveling for two days. Amen. Getting this weird place, weird showers, weird beds. Lizards crawling on the wall. Oh yeah. Well, lizards kill the mosquitoes so you don't get bit. Amen. And you probably thought, why am I out here? You thought, would, Je would Jesus show up in Kawa West? Could he preach there and cast out devils and heal the sick? Could he walk on water there? Why can't you? Why not us? Uh, can Jesus show up here at Living Way? Huh? If he can walk on water here, why can't you? Can he cast out devils, heal the sick, raise the dead? Amen? Why not you? Right? Let me close this thing down. Right? You remember Elijah was so confident in God's power that he didn't want to, he didn't want the, 
He didn't want it to be easy. I didn't want it to be easy for this team either. Remember, he had that contest on, 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 the, uh, on the mountain there. He didn't want it to be easy. He made it hard. He had his, he had his disciples actually flood the altar. Remember that? Amen. So it would be more difficult to prove that God was who he was. You know what I mean? We could have stayed in a five-star hotel, but we believe God. And you, you could say, you know, we believe God that he was able to do exceedingly abundantly greater. Amen. We wanted to make it more difficult, and God still moved, right? We knew that God would move, and even though the situation in your life may be more difficult, may be harder than you think it is, God is able to do it. Just like Elijah, he made it harder, and God still showed up. Amen. So no matter how hard or how tough it is in your life right now, that God is able to move in your life. And no matter how inferior you feel, that you're not able to put your legs on the side of the boat and walk on water, you are saying, I am able. You are able, I'm going to tell you this, and when you become willing vessel and you become letting your, the, the Holy Ghost atmosphere and you change the atmosphere around you, you're going to start seeing the manifestation of God. People will get saved. People will come to you. God will put people in your life. You'll go places and do things. God will say, hey, I can use that person. I can use them down in Portadown. I can use them wherever. That's the God that we serve today. So, you know, tonight, if you're facing a challenge, you're facing something that's going on in your life, and you're facing one of the, maybe, maybe something that you've never been through in your life, maybe problems with, you know, sickness in your body, or you don't know where you're going to spend eternity, whatever it may be tonight, this is your night. This is your moment. This is your Elijah moment. You know, Elijah was like, God, why, well, you know, find somebody else. But, God, but he said, God, I'm not perfect, but God, with you, I can do all things. Jesus Christ said we could do all things through him who strengthens us. We have the ability inside of us to change the earth. God will move mountains, move doors. He'll move barriers. He'll move situations. And he'll show favor in our life if we'll just do what he said, what he called us to do. Do you believe that today? Every one of us have tasted the favor of God. Every one of us. And what I'm telling you today is challenge yourself. Come back Sunday morning. Invite somebody. Fill this house up where there's nowhere to even sit so we may see the manifestation of God. I guarantee you Sunday morning it'll, be, uh, it'll even be stronger than tonight because I'm believing God is going to show up in a mighty way. The prayer warriors are going to come here praying like they never prayed before. Amen. You're going to come here worshiping like you never worshiped before. Our team will come back worshiping and praying like we never had before because we believe in you. We believe in God. We believe in what he's doing in the earth, and we believe we're going to see the greatest move of God that we've ever seen right here on this property. you believe that? You've seen it Sunday night. Y'all got a taste of it. Garrett said it broke out. Y'all got Holy Ghost buck wild. But y'all coming here tonight wanting to hear stories instead of coming here ready to get buck wild. Amen? You know, we come here tonight, the, the, you create the atmosphere. You know what I mean? I just, I, I had a message. I remember, I, I went there, I had seven or eight messages prepared. I, I never used one of them. In fact, every single time, I, walked to, I was walking up on stage one night, and, and the screen flipped to a different one. I said, praise the Lord, that must be the one I need to go with. Bam, I went with that one. You see what I'm talking about? God is ready. All he wants us to do is be willing. You, don't, you, don't, you, know, you prepare a message, you got it all figured out. I like when God changes it. You got a prayer to say, something to do, something, and all of a sudden God shifts you a totally different way. You came in one way tonight, why don't you leave a different way? You come in without able to speak, you can leave out of here speak. You came out of here, you came here in a spiritual prison, didn't know how to operate spiritually free, tonight's your night, right? I believe God I believe God will do it for you. I believe if you just believe in Him tonight and trust in Him for a little bit, that God will change your life in ways you couldn't even imagine. Think about do this. Think about how your life's changed in the last 30 days. 60 days. Amen. 90 days. Look at how great God has been to us. Some of you that went with us last week, how how your life has changed in the last 12 days. Right, Miss Barbara? How old are you? You're 70, right? Huh? 69. All right, she's 69. Your life changed these past 12 days, didn't it? My Lord, y'all ought to give her a hand. She's a trooper, man. Oh, God. Number one, she put up on my crazy self, dragged her through them airports. She became my mother. On the, I didn't lie. She's my spiritual mother. I was like, come on, Mom, let's get on this plane. Praise the Lord. I got my mom here. We're getting on the plane. <laughs> How many of you know that our God is able? How many of you know that this is your moment, this is your time, no matter how young you are or how old you are. How many know that God is ready to move in your life, ready to move in this ministry? He's ready to change you and transform you if you'll be a willing vessel. He wants to use you, every single one of you. He sees you. He believes in you. I believe in you. 
I want this to be the greatest day of your life. I want this to be a new day in your life. I don't want you to leave this place the same way you got here tonight. You can leave it with a smile on your face. No matter what people say, if you know who you are in Christ Jesus, everything else is going to flow out. Sabrina, get us on. Let's close this thing out tonight because it's about Betty by time. Right now, Team Nairobi is 4 a.m., so praise the Lord. Good morning.